Hey guys, this is Hell Hades. This is a Raid Shadow Legends video. Guys, I'm on the test server. I've got some new patch info, uh, which we can go through in this video. I've got King Garog rebalanced. So we're going to test his damage in this video. I've also got Sersha, who I might do in a separate video. But let me know if you want to see that. I don't know how many people have spent enough to even care. Uh, probably not enough, honestly. So I might leave that one. Depends what the comments look like down below. Um, but yeah, back on the test server. So we're going to try some stuff out today. I guess the first thing to call out here is I thought we were going to get a big feature this week in this patch, but it doesn't look like that's the case. It looks like they're going to save the new big feature for next month. Uh, I actually did a video with Crucian over the weekend. I put it out and uh, we talked about tons of different things that we would love to see change in Raid. If you didn't see that one, you should check it out because it's quite an interesting watch. But anyway... Let's get into it. So let's start with some of the different things that are added into this patch. We've got clan improvements. So in clans here, we're giving clans more room to grow. So we're adding an extra new five clan levels. So up to level 25. And within those levels, you get additional multi-battles. Number of clan shop slots goes up to 14. Our weekly clan quest is still the same. An extra silver. You know what? <laughs> I totally forgot this was even a thing from clans. I didn't realize this is where all this is coming from. It's been so long since I looked at this page. So we're actually getting multi-battles due to the size of our clan, and we're getting more silver from campaign. You know what, Raid? Just make this more silver. People don't, like, when people are farming silver anywhere in the game, like, ah, oh, just make it more. Just, just make it more. Like, more silver from selling stuff, more silver from any sort of drop where silver would be. Yeah, I don't know. You could also unlock stuff like, I don't know, additional keys for places. Like, there's there's more you could do with this, I think. But anyway, they're adding more for, like, late-game clans to get more stuff. Again, it's, it's like a minor quality of life tweak, really. Not really much. And there's going to be new items in the shop. Okay, so let's see what later-game players will get. So for slot 13, can I see what the rotation of it is? Yeah. So it looks like none of this has changed. Which Again, it's a shame. They should have... Lots of people have done this and done this. Imagine if there's this then goes into someone else, this goes into someone else. Like It's just an opportunity. These type of places in Raid, I feel like they're a bigger opportunity than Raid realized to, to get some brownie points back. But slot 13, so you can either buy the Mythical Charms for the Forge, Chaos Powder or Chaos Dust. And slot 14 will be either an XP Barrel, more Killstroke. Who's using Killstroke? A free gear removal or a mythical chaos ore. Honestly, I mean, I guess let's be clear. I would buy the dust and the powder whenever I can. I would buy, I probably would buy the free gear removal. I probably would buy the mythical chaos ore, albeit as a, a late game player, I've got a decent amount. And yeah, I probably would buy the barrel as well. So yeah, they're not bad items in there. Again, it's not a game changer. It's literally just a quality of life thing for later clans, really. It's not, it's not like a impress all. Imagine if you'd done some stuff up here with all this trash. Uh, anyway, clan improvements, that's it. That's all we've got in clan improvements. So siege improvements, I can't really show you a lot on the test server because I'm not in a siege. Doesn't give us anything like that in the test server. So I'm just gonna talk through what they're saying here, but there is a decent amount. So let's have a look. If a clan destroys an enemy stronghold, okay, the main objective is the enemy stronghold, of course. Yeah, let me get into the, the actual game. So if, if a clan destroys a stronghold or a mana shrine, or if theirs is intact at the end of a battle phase, all clan members who have set at least one defense, won at least one battle, or captured one enemy team slot during the siege will receive mana orb rewards. So you get more mana orbs than you currently get. Don't know the amount, but uh, I've been told it's not one. <laughs> um, if a clan has won a siege, each clan member who set at least one defense, won at least one battle, all that same stuff, will receive a victory chest. Do we know? I think we already get that anyway, right? So we already get a victory chest. Um, so let me just check here. The same applies to receive a milestone rewards. As, so I guess what they're saying here is you don't get a victory chest unless you participate. I think that's what's going on there. So you need to at least have set a defense, attack somewhere, whatever, to receive the rewards. Next one here, the cost of repairing stronghold, towers, defense towers, magic towers, all that sort of stuff, mana shrines, drastically reduced that's a good one actually like currently 
you know, people are, are just kind of like not really repairing buildings because it makes no sense to. So drastically reduced. Um, right, we've then got attack scrolls distribution. This one's an odd one to me. I'm not really sure what's going on here. Basically saying attack scrolls distribution will be adjusted. At the start of a battle phase, attack scrolls will be evenly distributed between all clan members. Oh, I see what's going on. So currently, if you have upgraded your stronghold, actually what you're doing is you're giving the enemy team more attacks. And what they're saying here is you will get the even amount of attacks as your, your opponents. I believe that's what's going on there. So it is a priority to upgrade your stronghold, whereas beforehand it was like it's, it doesn't make a lot of sense to upgrade our stronghold. Uh, okay. Uh, the number of victory medals given to clans for protecting and destroying the stronghold and mana shrines will be changed. Defending the stronghold and mana shrine will bring your clan 1,200 and 450 medals uh, respectively. And destroying an enemy stronghold will now bring you 1,300 and 550 for a shrine respectively. So you're getting more, more medals basically for keeping your, your important buildings intact. That's all I got. That's all I got on, on sieges. Let's check out King Garog. Uh, so the first thing I'm going to do with him is get him all naked. Okay, so I'm back on the main game. I'm going to test my King Garog right now versus King Garog on the test server. Uh, the way I'm going to do it is take him into just a Doom Tower level and let him smack up some enemies. And I've got a trusty old-fashioned spreadsheet where I'm just going to map to see old damage versus new damage so uh let's find this fella the garage mine's plus two it's irrelevant in terms of testing we're just seeing old versus new so i'm going to go in and try not to be on auto which it was <laughs> am i going to be dead before i test one okay so we're just going to go in and be like a1 i don't want to do it when there's stuff out there but i'm going to go in a1 hit 10 times test that damage then we're going to do the same thing, basically, with all of the skills. Then I'm going to go on the test server and do the same thing there. And we're just going to check the averages of damage. What sort of damage percentage increase did he get versus where he is today? Okay, we have gone through and checked both current server and then test server to see what these numbers look like. So this is a bit of a quick and dirty, but it does give us a good feel for where we're at with King Garog. So basically what I do is I just do a number of hits record the, the stat i record only non-crits um and it's a little bit awkward on the a3 because he does proc some ignore defense which um i might have captured some which did ignore defense so the a3 is most likely to be inaccurate on this data but very small sample of hits uh before and then after on the a1 so it looks like somewhere between a 10 and 15 percent damage increase on the a1 the a2 it's probably a 20% damage increase, which is significant. And in the A3, I'm guessing is a 5% damage increase based on numbers, but it's not big. Anyway, the, the number change on the A3 is not big. But then he already like hit hard. If we go on to hellhades.com for his A3. Like this guy was not a slouch for damage. If we look at his uh, his A1 was average, but his A2 was already godlike. His A3 was already godlike and, you know, high up there in terms of some arena type hits. You know, top 150-ish for arena hits on his A3. So it already did decent damage there. Now what they're doing is they're making his A2 more relevant and his A1 kind of relevant, I would say. So let's load him up and give him a bit of a run. What's interesting with King Garog now is his... It's your ability to control when he's just going to basically be doing true damage. Uh, and I think this buff is quite interesting on him. So I am going to have skills which ignore 20% of the target's defense. Each crit has got a 50% chance to reduce the cooldown of Gore Maker, which is his A3, his AoE. This ignores 20% defense. So just think about that for a second. 100% crit rate means that it's a quad hit you should get two cooldowns of door maker every time you run the a2 and this is on a three turn cooldown so i think you're basically going to be doing a3s into a2s almost non-stop the a1 barely gets a look in with the way they've they've got this set up and i do like that a lot but we've got the ignore defense going on here which is new 
uh, which means this is going to hit for a decent amount more. But then we've also got ignores defense here, which was already there, but ignores another 5% defense for each buff on this champion rather than debuff on the enemy. Why this is good is it's now it's in your control. Okay, so we've got 20% off the bat. We then get, depends on your sets, but call it 25% for lethal or savage. That's 45. Another 5% for cruel. We're up to 50% ignoring defense already. You then start throwing buffs on the guy. Let's say you get, I don't know, four buffs. Yeah, four buffs is another 20%. You're already at like 70% ignoring defense, which starts to get a bit crazy. Yeah, so if you get your Helm Smasher proc off, 50% chance to ignore 25% of the target's defense, you're basically doing true damage at this point, which does significantly change the game for this guy. You've still got the same problem with him, though, in that he's hard to keep alive. Yeah, but I think for PvE stuff, suddenly he is a bit of a menace, especially when you talk about you know, like high level. I don't know if I can do it. Have they unlocked the Doom Tower? No, they have not. Ah, oh, that's annoying. Um, so I'm thinking, like, if, if you're talking about high level Doom Tower stuff where you're trying to smash your way through enemies, you know, having. Can I even do this here? Uh, I'm so low level. Unfortunately, the Doom Tower's not unlocked for me here, but. Um, like, think about this three buffs, four, five, six buffs, dead. Obviously, dead. They would have been dead anyway, honestly, but. Um, you know, the fact that when we start to get buffs, we get the reduced cooldown coming in. And yeah, I just I just feel like this guy could end up being an absolute menace when it comes to just smashing your way through high level Doom Tower waves. If you don't have, you know, like the the easier way to make this stuff happen. Again, tons of buffs up. He's got his cooldowns done. Ah, oh, I think he must be next turn where he's gonna get ready to smack. That's another 30% ignore defense going off there. On his A3 only, by the way. Not, not every bit of his kit. The thing which I don't love about him is passive is just irrelevant in almost all of the game. But the change is definitely better. Why is he not a 3 in? He must have it back. That's interesting. Is he just... Does he just not like doing it? It's only on a four turn cooldown. Plus, that should have been getting reduced by the A2. Unless I just missed one of the hits of it, but I think he should have had that back easily. Let's just see here. He has not got either of them back yet. He's going to have his A3 back next go. His A1's now got a higher chance to stun, which is, is okay. So he should A3 now with a ton of buffs. And like easy clear yeah i don't know i don't know like is he suddenly you know the best nuker in the game no i don't think he is but he's definitely he was already good at damage and i think that has stepped up a notch uh i still think he's got the same problem though it's like unless you've got a good security blanket for him he is going to be difficult to keep alive so there you go that is patch notes let me know what you think and i will see you in the next one